The challenging thing is how do we make it our own? Because we're building on Tron Legacy, first of all. So luckily, I was I was really fortunate to be able to work on that movie with Daft Punk. So um, when I came to this, to this project, we discussed taking some of the sounds and the ideas and repurposing them into the show. But at that same time, we don't want this to be just some sort of offshoot of Tron Legacy. This needs to be its own thing. So, and that's what's really exciting is that episode to episode, we have these interesting storylines, interesting things the characters do, the characters go to different places and that kind of drives us into new places musically as well. Yeah, I, mean, I think also because uh, the, the story you know, has a, a different theme to it as well. I mean, Legacy is, is very much this father-son story and and uh, Uprising is, is, is much more of a sort of classic hero's journey so it, it really lends itself to a different, more thematic type of type of, uh, type of score. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Um, you know what's, what's time is getting time is definitely like number one. You know we're we're generally we have about two weeks per episode, um, but at any given time we're looking at three different episodes. We're kind of rotating. There's one episode we're writing, the next episode, the previous episode we're revising, and the episode before that we're mixing, dubbing. So it's, you know it's it's funny because uh, I'm focusing focusing on an episode three ahead of what we were working on yesterday and you know, the dub. So it puts your mind in a funny place. Um, but that being said. Once you get that challenge out of the way, it's um, it really what 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 I find really fun about this is, is it's we have so many different characters and we have a whole season which is translates into hours and hours of music and hours and hours of story and it's it's really wonderful to be able to take you know certain characters and develop them into, into and develop music for them into something more than what you can do in just one show or just one film. Yeah, and the situations. I mean, you go into different situations that you that you didn't see in Legacy, and you know, there's 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 a lot of these these friends hanging out like you know, at work in their normal daily life that you that you wouldn't see in legacy. And like what does that score sound like for for when they're just just being friends? And that was like there's you know, there's action adventure type elements that, that you know that, could, can you know build off of things that were happening in the movie? But there's the other elements that are just so completely different from anything that you saw in the movie that are you know life on the grid. And it was like, you know, all right, Joe, go. Like, come up with that. It was like, wow, head scratch. But like, the stuff that we just come up with is so cool and unique to not only to the show, but I think to to anything else that's out there. It's just, it's just it's been that part of it has been like for me as you know like all the different stages that I go through with this project that part of it coming into our like weekly you know every every week basically we have these these music meetings and I just get to sit back there yes that's so good and I get to sit back and go oh god I hope he likes it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you for instance have sort of different music for each one of the characters because I know that when I was younger and working over at Disney they used to have this do music so uh, if you were over in the kitchen you would know the character was coming on you know his music was coming on so oh Zorro was coming on the screen so from the kitchen you'd come back in and watch we the show we don't do it quite as Peter and the hammer Wolf. on the head yeah, yeah we don't yeah. do it quite as hammer on the head yeah. um, yeah. as in those times yeah. however that being said um, certain characters do have their themes, and um, one of the one of the things I work really hard on as a composer is, is balancing my elements. So one element, for instance, is silence. I really like finding moments where we don't need to write music, but uh, more importantly, where we can give our audience a break. But one important thing I try to do is find areas where I can state themes, but then. Uh, at the same time also yeah. try to find areas where I'm gonna not state that theme so that when the theme comes in it'll be refreshing it'll be interesting so it isn't like every time you know the bad guy comes on you hear his theme you might hear some textures yeah. some little elements yeah. yeah certain instrumentation comes back to clue when he's there but you're not gonna hear maybe like an overt like horn coming in mm -hmm. you know, melodic yeah. 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 Was it a conscious effort to make sure there was more natural sound versus electronic? Or did it just happen by itself? Well, you know, it, it's funny because I remember we were talking about this on the film and, and uh, post 
film I kind of like I, I analyze I looked at you know it's it's a lot of acoustic orchestra and we definitely have a lot yeah. here I, too I think so too I mean because I spent a lot of time with that soundtrack because we tempt a lot with that soundtrack I mean it is in a lot of ways very much a traditional more orchestral, orchestral and score yeah. electronics yeah. scores that, and, and you know I think I think it's almost uh, a great counterpart to the grid the grid is cold yeah. digital yeah. dark yeah. blue yeah. and you know not you know, of course, like the writers have done an amazing job drawing emotion and drawing, you know, drawing that feelings and whatnot out of the characters and the faces that the animators have done with the faces. That's awesome. But also, also sonically, you can't just be cold digital all the time. Right? The orchestra is almost like the heart. Of yeah. The yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the art department. So you mentioned that you were yeah, I worked on the show Dexter for a while, and there was a bone, a human bone in that soundtrack. And that was cool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. And, um, and I guess I love, uh, I love using... Um, Chimbasa is pretty cool. Chimbasa and Bobby are pretty awesome. Do you have another question? Let's see, what's the biggest challenge in creating something in the future, sound wise? It's an interesting question because it, the, the show actually takes place probably around 1989 or somewhere between 86 and yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Um, even though it is this futuristic world, so we're sort of like giving some license there, I think. But, but it definitely has. I mean, like from as a as just a fan, I would say that it has a, a very forward, you know, modern, and uh, new sound to it. It's, it's definitely it sounds very very new and modern. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank you.